At the peak of his notoriety, Callum Von Moga was one of the poster boys in the fitness community. He had gained success on social media, won plenty of competitions, and had enough success in business to fund his emigration to America. But life is never this easy. Cal would face many challenges, injuries, and carry burdens which you wouldn't wish on your worst enemy. This is his origin story, the tale of his unfortunate downfall, and the account of his retribution and return to fitness and health. This is the rise, fall, and rebirth of Callum Von Moga. We've already worked out, we don't need the extra pump, we're big enough. June 9th. 1990, Callum Von Moga was born. Cal grew up on a small hobby farm in a small town of around 400 people in central Victoria, Australia. He had four brothers and one sister. With not much else to do, Cal had an affinity to birds and was always into sport, mostly playing soccer. I rarely saw Callum without uh, some sort of a, a bird on his, um, on his arm, his perch on his arm, whether it was a chicken or a duck. At age 14, Callum's older brother, either Alex or Harley, took him to an old rusty warehouse gym where his love of lifting weights blossomed. Circa 2007. In his final year of high school, Callum's father was involved in a major motorcycle accident, incurring a spinal injury, losing feeling in his legs, and thereby being wheelchair bound. Von Moga's mother, Ingrid, was rarely home which meant Cal was forced to take on the role of father figure for his siblings. Cal was routinely entrusted with making them breakfast, taking them to school, and making them their dinner. June 2011 Cal competed in his first international bodybuilding competition, the Junior's Superbody WFF Universe in Austria. He would also take home the first place trophy. After winning a few competitions, Cal started landscaping, hated it, joined the army for a short time, and hated it. This made him realize that he wanted a retail job, specifically in a supplement store. After doing this for some time, he also worked as a canoe instructor, mountain bike instructor, worked in after-school care, building, painting as a removalist, lifeguard, surf instructor, even though he never had before. He was basically bouncing around jobs because he couldn't find what he loved. This was until Classic Physique was introduced into bodybuilding competition. 20th of August 2013 On this date, Cal's life changed forever. A friend of his, an amateur YouTube creator, asked him if he could film him for a video, to which Cal thankfully agreed. At this moment in time, Callum was an unknown bodybuilder from Australia. Now, he was a viral sensation, and Miguel told him that he needed to create a social media presence, and fast. Luckily, he would do exactly that, as well as continuing to focus on bodybuilding. You know, I was working my ass off and uh, it was during this time I met a guy and he's a videographer and he is a supplement owner. Really great creative content. Uh, he made YouTube videos and he made a little, he's like, Cal, I just want to kind of capture a little bit of your journey and put on, on the internet, on YouTube. We did one workout together and then he visualized this kind of this like an idea of a, a motivational video. So we put it together and it went completely viral. He's like, Cal, you've got to make an Instagram, a Facebook account because you're going to get a lot of followers. You know, he told me, he goes, Cal, it's going to flip your life upside down. 2014. Callum would win the WFF Miss Universe in South Korea, which earned him his WFF and NABBA Pro card. Entry number 106 from Australia, Karu Von Mugger. 
Mr. Universe, Callum Von Moga. Congratulations. Two thousand and fifteen. Callum's achievements would be twofold, as he would win the WFF European Pro in France, as well as the WFF Pro European Championship in Italy. Two thousand and sixteen. Callum would choose to direct his attention towards a classic physique division, which was now gaining momentum. This proved to be a positive move for Callum, as he would then win the NPC Iron Games Championships in California. This win was documented in a full-length YouTube vlog, in which Cal was in fine form, splashing his little piggies in a pool while in the pull-up position. <laughs> Calling out Artemis Dolgan. Artemis Dolgan? I mean, Artemis Dushbag? Artemis Dolgan? Playing video games, calling kids Chapstick. Oh, you're right next to me. All right, Chapstick. Let's fucking get him. And of course, looking absolutely peeled. It seemed like nothing could bring Cal down. May 12th, 2017. Generation Iron 2, directed by Vlad Yudin, follows several bodybuilders as they struggle to find success in a competitive industry. Callum is one of those bodybuilders. It's a big job actually generating content each day. I have to be careful with what I say and what I do. This edition, which has a similar premise to that of its namesake, addresses the different issues current influencers must face if they are to be successful in the social media landscape. June 28th, 2017. It was on this date that a pattern of reckless behaviour started to develop with Callum. He uploaded a video titled, I jumped off a roof, do not do this at home, in which he, yes you guessed it, jumped off a roof into a pool. It seemed quite insignificant at the time, albeit something that belongs on a jackass film. Yet, this was the first documented example of Cal taking unnecessary risks, which would prove important later. <laughs> <laughs> November 2017. Callum tore his bicep while barbell curling 140 kilograms in Gold's Gym Venice with classic physique competitor Chris Bumstead for a social media stunt. No, are you good? Are you good? Pray. Catch you later. Pray. 2018. Bigger. Directed by George Gallo. Follows the grandfathers of fitness, Joe and Ben Weeder, as they build their empire despite anti Semitism and extreme poverty. Cullen plays the key role of Arnold Schwarzenegger, the person he had been compared to during his rise to fame. My name is Joe Weeder. How would you like to be the face of bodybuilding? I am training you to be the best in the world. This film is that of which Von Moga is most widely known and recognized from. This was his first mainstream movie gig, and it was a very big deal. April 2018. Callum tore his quadricep tendon off the bone, as well as re-tearing his bicep while rock climbing. These injuries, in conjunction with blood clots being found, resulted in Cal requiring surgery immediately. Due to the significance of these injuries and the extensive recovery period, it would be months before Callum could return to the gym and continue doing what he loves. He was confined to a single room for most of this period, and, as he said, the idle mind is the devil's playground. Yeah, I know. It's, don't don't it's, bring it down. It's, 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 yeah, right. I know. It's just my, it's my head. It's like, okay, it'll, yeah. 2019. Despite his shortcomings in the years prior, Cal was the king of comebacks. Despite his bodybuilding frame, he managed to land a modeling campaign with Gucci, becoming the first bodybuilder to accomplish such a feat. Two thousand and nineteen continued. Unbroken, directed by Vlad Yudin, 
follows Callum as he was forced to reassess his bodybuilding path and find a way to fight back up to the top after numerous injuries and controversies. I heard what are you, doing? you ghosted and blocked a girl you have a baby do within a week. Hey, there you go. Dude, you gotta get out of here, bro. Who are you? Then, on December 23rd, 2019, Nicole Segura falls pregnant with Callum's son, Kairos. Um, yeah, I um, have a child with Callum Bonmoger. He has a son. His name is Kairos. And um... due to only dating Nicole for a short time, Callum did not originally want to be part of the child's life. I won't expand on this point further, as this is Callum's business. Callum would, however, warm to the idea of having a son in the future, and his life was changed for the better. More on this later. Um, I'm going to tell you now that I'm a father, so I have a son. Um, and um, he's going to have great child support, and I'm going to be there for as much as, as I can be for him as a father. So that's all that re is really important in this whole situation, is that, yep, I'm a dad, and i got a kid, and um, I'm looking forward to raising him. 2020. Callum receives first place in the NPC Classic Physique Universe in South Carolina, where he would win his IFBB Pro Card. This was of course a massive achievement after already attaining his WFF NABBA Pro Card in 2014, after winning the WFF Miss Universe in South Korea. Mr. Universe, Callum Von Moga, congratulations. April 12th, 2021. Baz, Cal's mate and Phil Neck Lizard Pet dies at four years of age, despite his 14 to 15 year life expectancy, most likely due to their long voyage when Cal moved. Wait, Baz, you want to fly the drone? Yeah, sweet. Is he bailing? He's bailing. He's off. Catch you next time, Baz. See you, Baz. Your father. Father, yeah. My first pig dog. April 30th, 2021. Probably the second or third worst day in Cal's life so far. Cal's best mate and dog, Rex the Bull, unfortunately dies by choking on a chip while Cal's out of the house. Callum was obviously devastated at the loss. He wrote, He was the best companion, my best friend. He came into my life when I needed him most bringing about happiness, joy, and a renewed purpose. He was the only one that had the power to heal a broken heart, to mend a torn spirit. I don't eat, I don't sleep, I don't train. Um, yeah, this, this, this next thing that I'm gonna tell you um, has completely destroyed me. You know, falling off the cliff was one thing, completely screwing up my, my bodybuilding, you know, life and everything, tearing my quad and being disabled for a year was hard enough and it was right around that time anyway rex died he passed i lost rex in a freak accident coach greg and in today's video callan von monger is fighting for his life in icu after jumping through a second floor window may 6th 2022 callan would fall from a two-story window injuring his spine undergoing surgery and was placed in an induced coma. Police were called to reports of a man experiencing a mental health episode at around 8 a.m. Nearby construction workers said that they heard glass smashing, yelling, and screaming before multiple police cars and ambulances arrived. As stated, Cal would undergo surgery in his spine and spend 11 days in Melbourne's Alfred Hospital. After the incident, Callum sent out an emotional post on social media, writing, everyone has a past, We've all been through hard times. I admit, I messed up bad many times. But I don't care about dwelling on negative thoughts of the past. All I care about is that I learn from my mistakes and become a better person. The positive achievements I've done in my life far outweigh the markups I've had along the way. All I can ask is for your forgiveness so I can keep moving forward on the right path again. And this is a really tragic story to see where this guy was in his life not even a year ago or two years ago and to see where it's taken him because of just some stupid injuries in the gym which led to his downfall. You catching this? Yeah. August 2022. A video of Callum's younger brother, Ed Von Moga, went viral 
after he was filmed damaging an older couple's vehicle in what seemed to be a fueled state. Ed was seen attempting to smash the driver's side window with a boomerang before doing the same to their wing mirror. This unfortunate and negative incident would be foreshadowing for something that was to happen later. November 16th, 2022. Bodybuilder Callum Van Moga has avoided a conviction over a road rage clash in Altona North. Von Moga pleads guilty to criminal damage charges over an altercation following a car accident in Melbourne's Altona North. After causing damage to the other driver's vehicle, Von Moga stabbed the victim's car tire. He also pled guilty to criminal damage over an earlier incident where he left the scene after an accident without providing his details to the other driver. Police would also locate several weapons in Cal's vehicle, including brass knuckles, a tomahawk, and a hunting knife. In a moment of self-reflection, in an interview with his now sponsor Bucked Up, Cal would note at this moment in time, he realised he'd lost his way. It was in those moments that I was really looking at myself thinking, what, what are you doing to yourself? What are you doing with your life? Like, this isn't Callum. That was the realization where I'd lost my way. Like, I had like all these internal things which I didn't want to, you know, like display or show any weakness. So I unfortunately, you know, I picked up, I started like trying to numb myself and suppress it with like, you know, going out or drinking or partying and stuff. And, um, you know, it, it, and I didn't even see like that I was kind of like drifting down this wrong path. and started spiraling and then it got to a point where I just wasn't, you know, in control. January 2023. Callum releases a video titled, Let Me Explain, in which he shares his feelings regarding the ups and downs he had faced over the years. His habits, his depression, his injuries, all of it. In his video description, he wrote, As I look back, anxiety and depression took over and I felt as if I lost all control. I want to move forward and leave 2022 behind. I want to focus on positivity and balance in my life, physical, mental, and spiritual. To my supporters, thank you, truly. Thank you for being there through my lowest moments, and I'm looking forward to reconnecting with you all. As I said, in this video, he thanked his dedicated fans and apologized for his absence. And uh, I want to uh, express my gratitude to each of you who have reached out and uh, in, in times where I wasn't doing so well, um, and I was struggling and, you know, I apologise for my absence and... Uh... Mike, a huge multi-agency search was launched today. That's because 28-year-old Edward Von Moga hasn't been seen since Thursday. March 2nd, 2023. Edward Von Moga, Callum's younger brother, was reported missing. This just months after the aforementioned incident. Police found his truck on Friday afternoon on Elamata Road in Anglesey. Yesterday, his vehicle was found more than 30 kilometres away, parked on Elamata Road at Anglesey. Cal wrote, I was excited to meet you all at the Arnold, but during that same time, I was going through the toughest moment in my life. On the day I flew out to Ohio, I found out my brother was missing. Every second of the day, my mind was elsewhere, thinking about Eddie. I know I was physically there, but mentally not present. I want to apologise to those who approached me and sadly, I had to turn away because I was too emotional. Thank you everyone for the love and support during this time. This video is dedicated to my brother Edward Von Moga. Working with Bucked Up is a, is a blessing that I've been able to have to come back and work with, you know, this, this wonderful supplement company who have such a good family orientated business. Mid-2023, Cal moved back to the States where he made a comeback to social media. This allowed him to gain sponsorship from Young LA and Bucked Up. In a video titled Long Time No See, Life Update, Cal shares his vulnerabilities yet seems mentally stronger despite all the adversity he has faced. Now 33 years of age, Cal talks about many setbacks he has faced today. Losing his brother Eddie, finding his place in the world, self-confidence and acceptance, and his future. His true followers, fans, and supporters will notice the words on his t-shirt during this video, those being mad desire. This is what inspired me to make this video. Callum's journey has come full circle. 
he has now embraced his humble beginnings in which he was filmed for the motivational video which would lead to his eventual success. I don't really know where I want to go with this. I'll continue to train and do some shows and hope one day that all this will bring me somewhere or open up some sort of pathway or pay off and, and lead me to, to something new and exciting. I don't know yet. That's still a mystery to me. Callum, if for any reason you are watching this, I wish you all the best for your future endeavours, from one Aussie to another. This has been the rise, fall and rebirth of Callum Von Moger. It's hard to say whether Rich Piano went viral for his brutal honesty regarding steroids, his impressive yet equally unusual physique, or his memeable persona. You gotta eat big to get big, goddammit. One of my deep dark secrets, a lot of people have probably heard of this, but um, it's basically an eight hour arm workout. What, what, what? But perhaps by looking into his life, his rise to fame and his unfortunate death, we will answer this question. In this video, we will explore each stage of Piana's life, his early years, bodybuilding, day trading and investing, YouTube, social media, business, and his unfortunate death. Join me as we investigate the life and death of Richard Piana. This is Rich Piana, more than a monster. <laughs> Richard Piana was born on the 26th of September, 1970 in Glendale, California and was raised in Sacramento, California. Rich has stated that his mother greatly influenced his hyper-focus on the physical shell. He also explains that his attraction to bodybuilding began at the age of six. His mother and stepfather were both bodybuilders and as such, he would go to the gym to watch his mother train staring in disbelief at all the men which resembled his he-man dolls. Well, I was always around bodybuilders and then, you know, she'd take me to the gym. So I was at the gym while she trained, you know, six, seven years old, um, you know, just in the environment. So, you know, watching the big guys and, you know, I was into the he-man action figures, you know, and then I look around and realize that there's actually, you know, real cartoon characters like this. And, you know, so I just became intrigued he was thereby heavily influenced by her and Bill Canberra, an old school bodybuilder. I remember that one day everyone was like, who's that guy? Who's the guy over there? Who's the guy? And he was wearing a sweatshirt and sweatpants. And uh, it was Bill. And people were like, who is that guy? You know, he's a monster. At age 11, he finally began lifting weights. And four years later, he started competing in bodybuilding contests. At age 15, Rich participated in his first bodybuilding competition, and by age 18, it was clear that he had potential. If one was to look at images of Rich Piana taken during his rise to prominence, one might be surprised to hear that his career was quite short-lived and in the grand scheme of things, not very prestigious. I say this because he clearly had an impressive physique during his bodybuilding peak, making well-known names such as Dave Palumbo look underwhelming. For example, in the 1999 NPC Nationals in which Rich placed seventh, beating Dave. It's also worth noting that in preparation for this show, Rich ran the quote, craziest regimen I've ever done in my life also stating that he had packed on approximately 48 pounds in just one year. I'm gonna talk about the craziest uh, regimen I've ever done in my life. Um, in a year, I put on 
approximately 48 pounds of muscle. Rich did, however, win quite a few shows during his career. Rich's main bodybuilding achievements were first in the NPC Mr. Teen California in 1989, first in the NPC Super Heavyweight Mr. California in 1998, seventh in the NPC Super Heavyweight at the USA Championships in 1999, first in the NPC Super Heavyweight at the Los Angeles Championships in 2003, first in the NPC Super Heavyweight and overall winner at the Border States Classic and first in the NPC Super Heavyweight at the Sacramento Championships, both of which occurred in 2009. After not placing at the NPC Nationals in 2010, it is my belief that Rich decided to hang up the togs and focus on other ventures. One of these ventures would be building a fortune. I got into day trading, invested in mutual funds, invested in the stock market. I went, took it as far as day trading at home on the computer, started making good money. This is back, you know, in the internet boom when anyone could make money. Rich would make early money through such means as day trading and property investment, at least at this stage in his life. In early videos, he explains that his success in trading was through mutual funds, but he later realized that certain stocks were doing better than others. Yeah, you know what, I'll just play the clip. My money started growing. So I started to become like kind of obsessed with putting more money in. And then I started doing a little research on my own and I found out what makes up a mutual fund. So, you know, I figured out that it's, you know, certain stocks they put together in a portfolio is a mutual fund. So some of the stocks, you know, were doing better than the other stocks. So, you know, logical thinking is why don't I just invest in those companies that, you know, are really moving higher risk, but more money. Piano would then direct his attention towards property investment, mostly within Texas. So I continued to, to day trade and then, you know, I bought my first house. So, you know, within a couple of years, I sold that house, you know, made a couple hundred thousand and went, bought a bigger house, the market's still climbing, um, still, still doing some, you know, some trading, but not as much as starting to get involved in other things. It soon eventuated that Rich no longer needed to work as his investments were bringing in enough passive income. This allowed Rich to jump into the content creation with both feet. With his newfound bags, Rich had enough money behind him to redirect his attention to other ventures. One of these ventures would be starting his own YouTube channel, which he would do on April 11th, 2011. Rich's first YouTube video was tastefully titled Interview with Hot Chick that beat up a guy in Gold's Gym parking lot. Not entirely indicative of what his channel would later encompass. His second video titled Crazy Pitbull 23 Inch Arms was a little more on brand and his next three would all be car related videos. These little snippets of Rich's life would inspire Rich to create those series which made him most famous, such as the Bigger by the Day and Resurrection series. These videos spawn such memes as, right babe, uh oh, busted, whatever it takes, and yep. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. All right, baby. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. Right, baby. Yep, yeah. Right? Yeah, <laughs> yep, yep. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> Additionally, Rich's motivational speaking, personal life stories, gym sessions, special guest appearances, and insights into his daily life resulted in the rapid growth of his YouTube watch time and follow count. He would later leverage this notoriety and redirect it into other ventures, as we will discuss later. Rich would also create his Instagram on August 2012 and Facebook in October of the same year. These of course allowed him to further expand and grow his influence and audience. Hey, what's up everyone? Today I want to talk about social media and I want to talk about the importance 
Um, a lot of people out there have no idea how important social media is nowadays, especially in the fitness bodybuilding community. Actually, in life in general, as far as the business tool, social media is incredible. Um, as far as for personal use, you know, I probably wouldn't be on there, but for business, it's an incredible tool. In his videos, Rich often spoke of the mentality of the 5%, which he said is the percentage of people who are willing to do whatever it takes to achieve their goals. The importance of this mantra will also be discussed later. Where the f we park, babe? I have fucking cool. I'm busy looking at you. <laughs> it's also worth noting that Piana's unique look allowed him to be cast for several small TV roles. Rich was cast in the following. The Parkers in 1999, <laughs> the Planet of the Apes in 2001. Scrubs in 2002. Miss O'Brien, I'm afraid I'm going to need a urine sample. Malcolm in the Middle in 2004. And Ripley's Believe It or Not. Mr. California, 1998. That's all I got, what can I say? Of course, over a decade later, Piano would feature in a bodybuilding documentary. But let's go chronologically. Piano would also feature on various commercials, such as Dr. Pepper. Tastes more like regular Dr. Pepper. The Comedy Channel. <laughs> and some weird procreation wrestling show. Earlier I mentioned that Rich would often refer to the 5%. Those people who would do whatever it takes to achieve their goals, goddammit. Well, this mentor inspired him to create a business which embodied it. This business was aptly called 5%, and it was through this brand that he pushed sales of supplements and apparel, mostly. This merchandise was, of course, targeted towards those he believed adhered to this mantra, this way of life. Rich would also become one of the first to utilize the powerful marketing tool of influencer affiliates or sponsored athletes, mostly big tattooed freak shows, as well as using booths at fitness expos to interact with fans and other various pigeons. See any pigeons yet, Dad? How about you, Lucky? <gasps> Ooh, me? This brand was, of course, very profitable for Rich, and continues to sell quite well even today. However, this brand also caused some headaches. Mack Truck, a former 5% sponsored athlete, would attempt to fight Rich at the LA Fit Expo in 2017, after they had some big guy beef. As Mack Truck told Rich, he wanted to leave his company for a bigger paycheck. At the Expo, Truck tried to sucker punch Rich, as seen in this video. All right, y'all. So all these videos are circulating, and um, a lot of you people are talking about I sucker punch Rich. You can't sucker punch a person when you square it up with him. I was just quicker than dude, and y'all see he kept provoking me. I was on my way out. Man, my dude's leaving. Mac would also later release a voice recording of Rich Piana in which he is making racist slurs. This of course threw Piana deservingly in hot water. There's an audio tape floating around on the internet um, of me saying some fucked up shit. And when I first saw it, I had no recollection. Like what the fuck is this shit? This is not me. Obviously it's my voice, so obviously it is me. 
So I'm fucking looking at Chanel like, babe, I have no idea what the fuck this is. So, you know, it's your voice, babe. So you must have said that shit. Um, so just on that note alone, I want to apologize to everyone that it's not okay. Never, it's never okay. Never acceptable to use that word, period. Well, when I heard that, I was floored because, not because, oh, this is Rich Rihanna, a white man saying this. It's because he have a platform. He have a lot of youth yeah. following him. Mm -hmm. And he have a lot of people that always leave a lot of racist comments on every black YouTuber channel. So it was like he gave them the fuel. Yeah. So it was more so that. Now, do I think Rich hate black people? No. Mm -hmm. I always tell him all the time, you the blackest white guy I know. Bad blood seemed to run deep in the veins of former 5% athletes, as Big Boy would also have beef with Rich, as he sought Rich's blessing to start his own apparel brand. We, you know, I was with his brand, his clothing supplement brand. 5%, right? Yeah, 5%. And he always told me like, hey, whenever you want to do clothing, just let me know, I'll be okay with it. So, uh, so that's what I did. I came to him out of respect as a, as a man, you know what I mean? I don't have to come to him, but out of respect for someone that helped me out. So I went about and started doing that, and I guess it, it bothered him, you know what I mean? Uh, even though he gave me the permission, not that I need permission, but out of respect, I got his permission. Yeah, out of loyalty and respect. And um, in return, he didn't show me the same respect, you know? Um, he texts me at 3 a.m., like in the middle of the night. These rivalries are a small blip in the otherwise overwhelmingly positive interactions most individuals had with Rich, and this is mostly how he's remembered. He's passed away, so I have no ill things to say about him. I'll only speak positive, guys. Man, he hustled, you know, with the supplements. He upled, uh, hustled with his clothing brand. He hustled with the YouTube. He hustled at expos. Everything he did, he did do it to the fullest, and that's what I learned. It's also worth restating that the 5% company is still doing well today, selling primarily supplements and apparel. I have to say that there were many years of my... Start over, mother... Damn it. After Rich would continue to kick goal after goal in business, yet continue to build his body, he would accomplish perhaps his greatest achievement in film to date. In 2017, Rich would be featured in Generation Iron 2, directed by Vlad Yudin. Although the film received mixed reviews, it was a far cry from his early acting achievements and, I believe, showed what a genuine person Rich was. I have more hitters than anyone, and I think I'm just the kind of person that people enjoy hating on. You know, it felt good for me to be the first one to just come out and say the truth. This is especially evident when directly compared to others cast in the film, who I believe do not seem to fit that description. Woman? <laughs> My wife is here? However, despite achieving such a fantastic and exciting milestone, his life would end in that very same year. On the 25th of August, 2017, at the age of just 46, all right, what's going on, you guys? Nick here with Next Time in Power. So, unfortunately, I have to make another video that I didn't really want to make. Um, so, Rich Piana has officially passed away at the age of 46 years old. Piana collapsed while getting a haircut from his girlfriend, Chanel Jensen. Rich spent two weeks in a coma before unfortunately dying. According to his autopsy report, both his heart and liver weighed twice that of an average adult male. It was also noted that he had significant heart disease, mild coronary atherosclerosis, fatty liver, congested thyroid, congested and discolored kidneys, ischemic brain tissue and brain swelling, ascites which is the accumulation of protein containing fluid in the abdomen, and yellowish discoloration of the skin. Additionally, the autopsy report was ultimately inconclusive on the cause and manner of his death due to the hospital's disposal of all toxicology specimens. This means that people who claim that Rich died of a direct result of drug use or abuse are simply speculating. Of course, I'm not insinuating that the drugs may or may not have been a contributing factor, but what I am saying is that I will not comment on this for two reasons. Firstly, 
I am not a doctor, and secondly, because Rich should be remembered for more than his autopsy findings and his admission of PED use. From an outsider's perspective, he was an honest, caring, and driven person who strived for greatness every day of his life. And in my opinion, this is how we should remember him. Beautiful thing, he was always a nice guy. He was always kind. You know, uh, uh, you think you got your whole life ahead of you, but tomorrow's promised to no one. And uh, Rich was 46, man. That's just, that's still a pup. And he had so much to uh, offer and give back, and so, This has been Rich Piana, more than a monster. I've been your host, Grant Kitchingman, and you've been somewhat entertained. I cannot stress this enough. The more you put into anything in life, the more you're gonna get out. The more hours you spend working on anything, the more you are gonna get out. Work pays. It doesn't take a fucking scientist to fucking logically understand what I'm saying. The more you put in, the more you get out. So stop fucking making excuses. Get out there and do whatever the fuck it takes to reach your fucking goals. Jesus Christ. Before the time the term social media influencer was coined, one man paved the way for millions to walk the same path. The legacy of Ziz cannot be understated. This legacy endures through those he has inspired, and although he has passed on, his memory lives on through them. His motivational quotes, charismatic persona, and captivating videos continue to have a positive effect even today. The aesthetic revolution Ziz inspired remains a cultural phenomenon, with gyms worldwide filled with those striving to achieve the physique he once had. Ziz would inspire the likes of Jeff Side and David Laid, who had developed their own aesthetic physique and were thrust into social media fame at a young age. As Ziz's popularity surged, so did his role as a motivator. His charisma, humor, and authentic love for fitness made him a beacon of inspiration. Beyond the gym, Ziz encouraged his followers to build and embrace their own self-confidence, promoting a holistic approach to personal development. His popularity and success extended beyond anything seen before in the fitness community. It was about the journey, the mindset, and most importantly, the aesthetics. However, Ziz's confident and outgoing persona was eating away at him from the inside, as the fame became almost too much for him to bear. He would wear a mask to conceal the truth. This is the story of Aziz Segevich Shaversian, better known as Ziz, the father of aesthetics. Born on March 24, 1989 in Moscow, Russia, Aziz Sergeyevich Shaversian was the youngest son of Maria and Sergei Shaversian. Aziz had one older brother, Saeed, who would look out for Aziz and the two were inseparable. However, their life was about to change forever as their family decided to flee Moscow. This occurred after Aziz and Saeed's grandfather, a famous doctor, was killed by the Russian Mafia. The Shaversian family moved to Melbourne, Australia when Aziz was three and later moved to Carlingford, New South Wales. The boys went to school at Maris College in Eastwood and Aziz would frequently top his class in most subjects. He would also finish year 10 as the ducks of his year group. During this time, like so many of us, he faced the challenges of body dysmorphia. He was often teased for his skinny frame and became disheartened with his current obsession with video games. He was now sick and tired of being called skinny, weak, a nerd, and shy. Now motivated and inspired by the results his brother Saeed had achieved, and being motivated to impress girls, Aziz decided to sell his World of Warcraft account and use the money to purchase a one-year gym membership at Fitness First. Now motivated both extrinsically and intrinsically, Aziz threw himself into bodybuilding, beginning a transformative journey that would later captivate the masses. After beginning his bodybuilding journey, Aziz became obsessed and began posting on the popular bodybuilding forum, bodybuilding.com MISC, where he meticulously documented both his strength and muscular progression. He would also often post to 4chan's fit, and it seemed that he was willing to do anything to achieve his dream physique. This is evident in this post, in which he stated that he wanted to achieve this physique in just one year. 
As such, it would be on this forum that Aziz would start asking questions regarding PEDs and later start using them himself, with this goal physique in mind. Unfortunately, this impatience is replicated in so many young people, which is a damaging mindset. Click here to subscribe to my channel to catch an upcoming video I'm making on this topic. Despite their risks, it is the unfortunate truth that PEDs do in fact work, and as such, Aziz's progress was now amplified. He would also look back on his progress in reflection, stating that the people who once hated on him were now fueling his progress, and he had a stern message for them. As his posts on forums were now starting to gain traction, Aziz started to combine his love of bodybuilding with that of hardstyle, trance, and EDM by posting troll videos. In these videos, he would call out the viewers by flexing, showing off his physique, and cutting shapes, also known as muzzing out. These videos would also gain traction, first on Facebook, which he created on March 8, 2010, and then later on YouTube, which was actually created prior on July 28, 2006. His YouTube channel became littered with music enthusiasts, trolls, and followers of the aesthetic revolution. He would also feature dance videos and footage of himself and his friends hanging out oh, oh, oh. in shops that looks mad, bro. Hey, that looks mad. or attending music festivals. What are you on, bro? <laughs> this friend group would eventually become known as the Ascetic Crew and would feature such people as Turtle, Phil Rejo, Babo, Gonzalez, Vlado, Super Turk, and Chesbra, which was the screen name for Aziz's brother, Saeed. Ziz would continue to gain notoriety for his impressive physique, but also his uncanny ability to troll people. For example, on November 22, 2010, he wrote on his Facebook page, If I can be serious for a minute, many people say that they are jealous of me, but I am jealous of most people, for they get to see me in 360 degree real life angles, and since I control myself, I will never know what that would truly be like. Despite this, Ziz would sometimes share glimpses of his actual feelings towards his persona, such as with this Facebook post. While most people have caught on, I still think it's hilarious how many still think my videos are me being serious and not realizing it's taking the piss for the lols. Does he love himself that much? What a show off loser. Of course, this public image seemed to be true of those outside the fitness community who seemed to think that Ziz's persona was a true representation of who he actually was. And I know who started this, Ziz, whatever the f his name is, Ziz, Ziz, whatever the f I don't even know. I've got a message for you, sweet cheeks, and I hope this reaches you. You're a wanker, you are a toss bucket. I don't like your videos, you're ugly, okay? You have a great body, I must admit. I'm attracted to that. Good body. Unfortunately, most of Ziz's original videos, posts, threads, and comments have been taken down, which has created this black hole for those who are his fans when he rose to prominence. However, with some internet sleuthing, aka this Reddit post, we can find his authentic Facebook archive. The updates from Ziz were predominantly troll posts, as he would play up the stereotype with which strangers would associate him. He would mercilessly troll women who he deemed to be gangers, such as this post, Yet, despite this, it seemed that his initial motivation to lift weights to impress girls was well-founded. He was now getting a lot more attention from females particularly, but also with other creators and casting agents. Both his impressive physique and his growth on Facebook and YouTube allowed him to feature on a series called National Road Trip, in which six YouTube personalities travelled to Hilland. Ziz was accompanied by Mo Bulldogs, Garant, Danny from Gradual Report, Big Naz and Carlo. I have no idea who any of these people are, but I'm guessing they were popular at the time. Ziz very unsurprisingly stole the show and managed to fight off a snake. Muzz to the beat of a didgeridoo. About looking like a Greek god all the time. And make an older lady blush. Definitely give that a hit. Which one? The one on the right, definitely. 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 Thank you. Oh. <laughs> he would also feature as an extra on the Australian series Underbelly The Golden Mile in Season 3, Episode 3, titled Kingdom Come, which aired on April 18, 2010. 
Ziz would also release a book titled Ziz's Bodybuilding Bible in May 2011, which would achieve a review score of 4.09 out of 5 stars on goodreads.com. He would also utilize his impressive physique to fund his university degree by working as a part-time stripper with Sydney Hotshots. Ziz also popularized such phrases as fwak, come at me bro, you myron, and you mad. These catchphrases, or at least one of them, come at me bro, was heavily inspired by one of the stars of Jersey Shore, Ronnie, as the TV show was gaining substantial popularity, even in Australia. However, this fame was starting to get to Ziz. He started to get disheartened by the amount of people who would harass him at the shops, at the gym, and at music festivals. These three guys jumped as jumped my mate Adam from the back of behind him and started punching him for him, like bashing him for no reason. Is that any way to fucking live life? Not being able to fucking go to a festival that you enjoy with your mates, with your girls, to listen to the music, to have fun, and you got to worry about fucking kid pieces of shit trying to fucking jump you and punch you just to just to get a name for themselves. The things that he once loved now caused him to be anxious, fearful, and just plain fed up with being approached by strangers. On July 13th, 2011, Ziz would announce on his Facebook page that he was planning on visiting Thailand to escape for at least one month. In this post, it would appear that he was uh, in good spirits. However, tragedy would unfortunately follow only three weeks later. On August 5th, 2011, Ziz's life was cut short during this vacation in Thailand. A well-known Sydney bodybuilder has died after collapsing in a sauna in Thailand. Shaversian suffered a heart attack in a sauna and was promptly taken to a hospital where doctors were unable to revive him. News of this started to emerge as Aziz's friends and family started publishing sombre posts on Facebook and his passing was confirmed on the 9th of August 2011 by the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade. This loss sent shockwaves through the fitness community, leaving fans grieving the passing of a charismatic and influential figure. The circumstances surrounding his passing remain a solemn aspect of his legacy as his autopsy revealed a previously undiagnosed congenital heart defect and cardiomegaly. His family stated after the fact that he had shown several minor symptoms in the few months leading up to this, including high blood pressure and occasional shortness of breath. Aziz also unfortunately had a family history of heart problems, which would have increased the likelihood of him being affected genetically. It was this underlying health issue which triggered cardiac arrest, yet many hypothesize his use of both PEDs and party drugs contributed to his death. These theories have recently gained traction and perhaps legitimacy as Saeed appeared on Bradley Martin's Raw Talk podcast. On this episode titled Chess Bra on Ziz Death, Life and Moving Forward, Saeed made the following comments. He, he's, he, he's obviously does other drugs that aren't steroids. Yeah, of course. They're yeah. saying he's in a sauna. He was very open about that. Too, like, yeah. yeah, he was open about everything. Extremely open, yeah. But they're saying it was a, like, a, like a heart attack. A heart condition, yes. So, but you're saying he did have a heart condition. I can't even answer that. Okay, okay. Yeah, all right. yeah. But um, all the truth will be revealed in due time. I just okay. have to yeah, respect my parents' wishes. Fair. I had to ask because I've yeah. read of course, it, of but course. you never really know. You know Everyone wants to know. I mean, I think you get what I'm saying. I just yeah. want like some peace because I've never gotten peace with his death. Still, still never will until I, you know, can really come out with the true message and, and then save people from dying. Yeah. I'm sure people could read between the lines, but eventually I'll, I'll speak out about everything. But that's on my back, dude, and it doesn't feel good. <laughs> from these comments, as Saeed himself stated, many people have and will continue to construct their own theory as to what caused Ziz to pass. However, out of respect for Saeed and his family, I will not offer any conjecture here. Saeed has said that he will reveal these details if and when his parents allow him to do so, and I respect this decision. The impact of Ziz on fitness culture was groundbreaking. He popularized the concept of aesthetics, emphasizing not just muscle size, but also symmetry, proportion, and an overall aesthetically balanced physique. The Ziz aesthetic became a desirable goal for aspiring bodybuilders, leaving an undeniable mark on the fitness community. A case could certainly be made that if he was here with us today, Ziz would be one of the biggest social media personalities and influencers in the world. 
as his brother Saeed states. Mate, don't worry about the Harrison twins, we would have taken over the fitness industry. Jeez and Chespra would have ran the fitness industry, I'm telling you. Without question, he would have inspired many more young men to improve their physical form and in doing so, their self-confidence. Despite the fact that Ziz initially rose to prominence by trolling the masses, his followers felt connected to Az for his honesty and, from all reports, his kind nature. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> come on, come on. <laughs> Not <too old. laughs> well, What's left for them? <laughs> Many people do remember Ziz for his trolling, but for me, I remember his motivational speeches spoken as inspirational music steadily rose in the background. If you remember nothing else from Ziz, or if you weren't around when he was alive and well, remember this. Ziz wasn't just a physique, he was a persona that resonated with a global audience. Everybody has a little bit of Ziz in them. As Ziz famously said, we're all gonna make it. In the world of fitness motivation, one name echoes from the past. A former West Point graduate, fitness model, motivational speaker, certified personal trainer, and army captain. This man was loved by many, but his life was snuffed out in a freak accident in which he was fatally struck by a train. If you were to ask any aspiring bodybuilder, fitness enthusiast, or gym rat in the early noughties, who inspired you? I guarantee Greg Pitt's name would be mentioned. His physique, motivational speeches, and inspiring workouts provided young people with the drive to get to the gym, train hard, and improve their physical and mental well-being. In this video, we will delve into the remarkable life and tragic death of a man whose impact reached far beyond the gym. This is the entire life story of Greg Plitt. Born on November 3rd, 1977, in Lutherville, Maryland, Greg Plitt was born into a happy family. His mother, Janet, was an interior designer and his father, Greg Sr., a real estate agent. Greg was born into a family of four, with the other member being his older sister, Virginia, who attended the United States Naval Academy at Annapolis. Greg himself was a graduate of the United States Military Academy at West Point, New York, graduating in the class of 2000 and was both airborne and ranger qualified, serving as a ranger for five years. His physical prowess was obvious to those he trained and served with. Something about him, perhaps his demeanor, work ethic, dedication, something seemed special to his peers. Greg loved serving his country, but it seemed his true passion lay in fitness. This passion allowed Greg to pursue a career as a successful fitness model and actor. Three times a day. Someone must really mess with their head, man. After Greg's time in the military had drawn to a close, this is exactly where he would direct his focus and attention. Greg rose to fame with appearances on several notable fitness magazines, featuring on over 200 editions. His chiseled physique and relentless work ethic made him an icon in the fitness industry, and it featured regularly on the covers of Iron Man, Men's Fitness, Muscle and Fitness, American Health and Fitness, Fitness RX, and Men's Workout. This notoriety also allowed Greg to appear in more mainstream media, including TV shows such as Workout, <laughs> Friends to Lovers, oh my God. Days of Our Lives, and Mystery Millionaire. I'm used to men with a bit more money than Greg. Plitt would also appear on numerous commercials, including Dosho, in which they would painfully dub his voice. I'm Greg, a West Point graduate and former Army Ranger. ATI Training Center. Alicia Marine, this is Greg Plitt for ATI Career Training Center. Old Spice and Bowflex. He would also model for Under Armour, Calvin Klein, Met RX, and Gold's Gym. His body was also notably used as a direct reference for the mannequins for Under Armour and for Dr. Manhattan in the Watchmen movie. On the back of this growing appeal and success, Greg was now starting to cultivate a fan base, and he would parlay this opportunity in developing a following on social media and on YouTube. Beyond his physique, Plitt was a savvy entrepreneur, launching successful business programs, supplements, and motivational content. He was also ahead of his time, as he hosted this content on his own website. These videos would go on to inspire millions of people around the world to pursue their own fitness goals. Of course, he would monetize all of these ventures to massive success. Greg then used this momentum to fully pivot into content creation, 
as he would often post workouts and motivational speeches, both of which were received positively by his fans. I personally remember watching Greg's videos to inspire myself to get off my lazy ass and get to the gym numerous times. Not only this, I can even attribute commencing my own fitness journey to being somewhat initially inspired by Greg. I'm sure many of you can attest to that yourselves. Much like popular YouTuber Christian Guzman. Greg Plitt was a huge inspiration of mine. I dedicated my first gym opening to him because he was such a had a big impact on my life and just trying to, you know, take the messages he sort of ingrained and just pass them on, right? His legacy lives on and that's the life goal, right? And you and you have a mural dedicated to him here. Yep. Greg Plitt demonstrated palpable discipline, dedication and resilience in his motivational speeches and workouts. This in turn created an infectious aura around him. And this aura was obvious even through the computer screen. His philosophy centered around pushing one's limits and never settling for mediocrity. I specifically remember watching one of his location workouts, which was based at a train station. This video went viral, and Greg subsequently realized that this content is what his fans craved. Little did he and his fans know this would be foreshadowing for something that was to happen in the future. Unfortunately, tragedy would unfold on January 17th, 2015. Rising reality star's tragic accident has left family and fans reeling tonight. A vibrant fitness expert known for living life to the fullest killed by an oncoming train while filming. On this date, Greg Plitt lost his life in a train accident while filming a self-produced promotional video for an energy drink. Plitt was sadly fatally struck by a southbound train in Burbank, California. Shockingly, the entire incident was recorded by an onboard event recorder camera which was mounted in the cab of the lead locomotive. It also appeared to witnesses present that Greg may have been attempting to outrun the train, presumably to demonstrate the effectiveness of the beverage. He had on all black, the train went by, I saw him stumbled over the tracks, he had a camcorder in his hand, something like yours, and then it, that was it, the train stopped. Well, I saw him stumble over the tracks as the train was going by, and then it stopped right there. On this date and in the days following, Greg's family, friends and fans mourned the loss of their son, brother, friend and role model. With countless tribute statuses being uploaded to every notable social media site at the time, millions of people had lost an icon and their primary source of motivation to improve their health and well-being. They never got to meet Greg, they never got to thank Greg and now he was gone. It should be said and more importantly understood that motivation should come from within. Intrinsic motivation is far more powerful than extrinsic motivation for that reason. It's born within the self. You getting to the gym in itself is making Greg proud, but I believe this is the wrong message. In my opinion, it would make him prouder if we were to make these healthy decisions for ourselves and therefore for the right reasons. You should be proud of yourself every time you work out, make the better dietary choice, and every time you make your health and fitness a priority. Though Greg Plitt's physical presence may be gone, his legacy lives on through the lives he has touched and the inspiration and motivation he provided. His legacy is eternal through the millions of people whose life he has improved. Greg's impact on the fitness community is a testament to the enduring power of his message. Even in tragedy, the spirit of a true legend remains unbroken. It's coming. There's no fear towards death because we can't control it for one. And when it does come, the only reason why you have fear is because you didn't do everything you wanted to do in your life. Right now, I'm okay to die. It's not about checking all the boxes. It's not about that. Because that's, that's a luxury. You don't have that right to live that long. All you have is today. That's all you got. Are you a bodybuilding fan? Here's a video of three bodybuilders the general population will not know. Are you a true bodybuilding fan or just a poser? Let's find out. Subscribe first, please.